Peter Kurtenbach here in the East Bay. Let's talk about the Warriors' first round playoff matchup. We now know who their opponent will be. It's the LA Clippers. First time since 2014 these two rivals have played in the postseason. You might remember that 2014 seven-game series, kind of the beginning of the Warriors dynasty. I know Mark Jackson remembers what happened at the end of that series, uh, and kind of the beginning of the end for the Clippers, too. Of course, we can go back and reminisce for hours, but let's talk about the series that's upcoming. I got three things to look for in this one. Number one, the Warriors are going to run the Clippers off the court, and, and this is not to be mean to the Los Angeles Clippers. I love what they're doing in the macro, but in the micro, it's kind of a shock that they made the postseason. We saw what the Warriors could do to this team on Sunday at Oracle Arena, the final regular season home game there. It had a playoff-like atmosphere, and it was a tight game for a while, and then the Warriors turned on the Jets, and the Clippers had absolutely no answer. Expect plenty more of that come the postseason. Yes, the Clippers will be adding Danilo Gallinari to the fold. They did not have him in that final game at Oracle Arena, final regular season game at Oracle Arena, but Danilo Gallinari is not going to save the Los Angeles Clippers here. That's not a big deal for the Clippers. Don't feel bad for them. They are doing exactly what it is they want to do. Again, them making the playoffs was gravy. What they wanted to do was clear salary cap space so that they could go out and sign a guy like Kawhi Leonard or sign a guy like maybe even Kevin Durant a guy like Kyrie Irving, max players this summer. And they're going to have the ability to do that because they traded away their best player, Tobias Harris, to the Philadelphia 76ers this past season around the, around the trade deadline. So don't feel bad for the Clippers. They know that they're going to get run off the court. The question is, again, four or five games. I'll be nice. I'll say five. Second thing, this is the matchup that the Warriors wanted, not just because they will run their opponent off the court. Frankly, they probably would have done the same thing with San Antonio. And who knows what would have happened with Oklahoma City, the other team that was in the running for the eighth seed. They won to avoid that fate. I find that matchup with the Thunder intriguing at the same time. There's a reason that the Thunder were in the running for the eighth seed. So the Warriors had a very good chance of just running any of those three teams off the court in four games five games. Maybe that Thunder game series goes six. Probably not. Certainly a lot more drama and intrigue and nonsense in that series with the Kevin Durant leaving Oklahoma City and all that. They're still not over it. Nevertheless, um, this is the series that the Warriors wanted because California. Last year, the Warriors had to play in the Central Time Zone all three of their Western Conference playoff series. I had to do the travel too. I'm not complaining, but okay, I'm going to complain. It was pretty rough. Uh, they get to travel first class on a private jet, Southwest Airlines. Nevertheless, that central time zone back and forth, it is taxing. And of course, it's taxing on the other team as well, but it takes a little bit out of you when you know that you're going to be playing well into June. Every other team is playing with complete desperation from the first series on. So the Warriors thrilled that they'll be in LA. It's one hour there, one hour back. Family and friends, some of them already live down there. Uh, they're going to be able to get there really easily. It's just a good thing. And again, they, they know that their opponent is completely overmatched. The opponent knows that they're completely overmatched. Doc Rivers admitted as much on Sunday. This should be really easy, really straightforward, really businesslike. Third thing, because we do actually have to talk about basketball. Interested to see how Kevin Durant plays in this first round series. I presume it will be exceptional no matter what it is he does, but will he be more of that playmaker that we've seen in recent weeks or will he go into Kevin Durant playoff mode as we've seen over the last two postseasons where he is just an absolute mid-range maestro? And that's something that you can get away with in the playoffs. The game slows down. It is about shot creators and shot makers. Kevin Durant can create a shot over anybody. You can put four guys on him. He's going to be able to get a shot off. He's seven foot tall and he has a high release and he can knock down a jumper from about 40 feet out. Kevin Durant doesn't have to worry about shot creation. He doesn't have to worry about shot making either. And teams just don't know what to do with that when the game slows down and you're having to execute in the half court. It's really easy to execute when you don't really have to run a play. You can just give the ball to Kevin Durant. Will Durant go back to that, or will he tap into the playmaking point guard Kevin Durant abilities that we've again seen over the last few weeks? This started around the time that he came back from that injury. Remember the Warriors kind of scuffling 
a little bit before they went to Oklahoma City and Houston three or four weeks back. They won both of those games without Kevin Durant on the road, and Durant, not wanting to mess necessarily with the Warriors' good mojo, comes in and played the role of facilitator. He has that terrible nickname, The Servant. Well, he was the servant over the last few weeks of the season. Really excellent in terms of dishing out the ball, playing a bit of a subservient role, all things considered, not getting up as many shots. So keep an eye on that. Either way works for the Warriors, certainly against the Clippers, but it could portend bigger things for the rest of the playoffs. And, and honestly, I'm not sure which one of the two is better. It's six one way, half a dozen the other. Both of them are going to get through the Los Angeles Clippers and probably all of the Western Conference opponents. Still, very exciting. Playoff basketball is here. This is what we've waited for all year. Lord knows Warriors fans have waited for this all year. That was a slog of a regular season. Crack open a beer, have some wine, celebrate with friends. You made it through the first 82. Now we can get down to real basketball after this series. We'll talk before, after, maybe even during game one. Mercury News, East Bay Times, all the channels, Warriors HQ podcast, at D. Kurtenbach on Twitter. It is full steam ahead. Warriors playoff action, Warriors playoff coverage with the Bay Area News Group. Talk to you soon.